And, you know, I want people to, um, you know, see me as uh, someone who uh, doesn't have an ideological bone in her body, um, that I'm really here for the right reason, uh, that I care about the kids and families of the state of Kansas, and uh, I want to use my um, approach uh, to public policy uh, to make things better. So she is, um, you know, we used to laugh a bit during the campaign about, you know, the differences between a show pony and a workhorse. <laughs> uh, she's definitely in the workhorse category um, where, and I think those kinds of skills are very appealing to Kansas voters and um, in an era where there's a lot of a lot of rhetoric, a lot of nastiness, a lot of partisan battling, that's really the opposite of Laura's style. Um, she has firm opinions. She knows what she believes. She wants to achieve goals, but she doesn't call names. She doesn't punish people. She doesn't mock folks. I mean, she is really a collaborative, collegial kind of leader. And when she first got into the campaign, I think there were people who suggested that that style was really not very effective. I think it's incredibly effective. And I think she, as voters got to know her, they also appreciated that some of the qualities that she brings to the table are, are just very different and very important for getting a job done. You know, I, I try to make decisions that are based on the facts uh, and, uh, and, and the reality in which uh, we live uh, rather than um, because uh, I'm doing a favor for somebody or um, it, it serves my purposes. She's the first to say I didn't really you know, spend my time in the legislature wanting to be in a different job. I didn't really seek out this office. I, I was very happy being in the state senate. I thought I was contributing. I thought I was doing a good job. And it was really that kind of call to service. It's like you are, you are important to run because you are probably the only candidate who can possibly prevail. And I think that finally was a convincing notion to her as she watched the campaign develop and, and decided that that was important. She loves this state, she loves, um, she cares a lot about the future and there were just too many issues and, and the future of Kansas was on the line. Well, you know, I grew up in the military uh, so that's the ultimate team. Um, and so I think it probably was bred into my family culture. But I can also remember um, a book that I read in, I think it was in college, and it was a, a book called Games Mother Never Taught Me. And in it, it talks about the, it, in this, this is back a ways, but it talked about the different ways that girls are socialized versus boys. And the thing that I will always remember uh, from it was, uh, and again, this was years and years ago, uh, I think things have really changed with Title IX and, and some other things that have happened, but you know, uh, talked about how boys, when they were picking a team, mm -hmm. uh, picked people who could do the job best. So. You know, they, they'd pick Billy to play first base because he was the best one. They, they'd pick uh, Joey to play outfield because he had a great arm. Uh, they looked at that, whereas girls tended to pick people they liked. Mm -hmm. And I, that always stuck with me that um, when I was, when I, so when I was working, when I was doing things, I. I decided to surround myself with people based on their ability and their skill set and what they brought to the table, uh, and not personality and not whether I liked them or not, but whether they had something to offer the conversation.